Good evening, everyone. I'll give a couple minutes here. Anybody get situated and come in that wants to tune in here? It's going to be quite, uh, quite the hour tonight. All right, we'll just go with a quick minute and uh, thank you everybody for joining us, uh, joining us uh, for Mindful Monday. Q loves you coming to you live. Um, you know, another week of of some shit. And we'll put it like that. Um, it's been uh, uh, we're gonna we're gonna get in, we're gonna get in the heart of some things tonight and uh, do our best to to continue a conversation that must be continued. Um, you know, between another uh, death of Richard Brooks and um, um, a few um, interesting uh, coincidental um, suicides supposedly going on, we've got we've got an interesting week to cover, and um, you know we'll we'll dig in. So um, let's just get to it. I've got uh, some my hosts tonight, which are both fantastic for friends of mine. Uh, definitely, uh, you, you know, um, for those that have watched the show multiple times, but my good friend and, uh, and typical co-host of most of these, uh, Patrick Ney is joining us. Patrick, how you doing? Hey, you, what's happening? How are you, buddy? Good I'm to do- see you. You too. You too. Thanks again for coming in here tonight. Of course. And then, uh, you know, back by popular demand, uh, this gentleman's been joining us here for the last couple of weeks. He's, uh, one of the best <clears throat> minds I know, best humans I know, uh, Ernie DeSilva. Thank you for coming back. Ernie, for having me. What's up? What's up? What's up, people? Where are you going, Eddie? How are we doing? Thank, thanks for coming back over here, Ernie. I know uh, you know we were talking before, and we've got uh, it's quite the quite the uh, the teeter totter going on in life right now, right? Yeah, you could say it like that. Yeah. So I'm so I just want to um, really just jump into this and start getting going here. Um, <clears throat> Let's let's start with this. Let's start with this. Wait, Q, can I can I interrupt for one second? Sure. Just, I'm sorry, and I've been thinking about this all day. And Ernie, I, you may know this, but there was a band called Love that was from LA in 1966, 67, 68. Some people say like they could have been the American Rolling Stones. The guy who was the leader was African American, but he didn't want to tour. And they're 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 um they have an album called Forever Changes, and if you've never heard it. It is one of the greatest albums of all time. Rock, rock music, thought out to the nth degree. It's brilliant. But there's, yeah. there's, there's a, there's a, um, <clears throat> there's a line in one of the songs that says, you know, he, he just, and this guy was groundbreaker to say the least. And we talked about this before, Ernie, the musicians that, um, uh, that, uh, you know, uh, who are African American. But it said he says we're all normal and we want our freedom. It's like we're all. It, we're all normal and we want our freedom. This is in 1967 and it still is so specific to today and it drives me insane. And I'm sorry I had to interrupt, but it was like, and that line just cr- kills me. We're all normal and we just want our freedom. That's it. We're normal. Everyone is the same to a degree. Well, maybe, okay. maybe I, I, yeah, I could, I, yeah, it's, I think it's, I definitely understand where it's coming from. I think majority of the people is, is that, um, I think that, that divide is, <laughs> as, as normalcy has gone, that, that word has changed a little bit over the last four They're five, just people. Decades. Everyone yeah, is just ultimately people. Ultimately, we're just people. Yeah. And I, I'll but, tell you what's wrong is that like, they do need to restructure the police departments because these guys obviously do not understand how to deal with these situations. And I'm sorry if these guys got sand kicked in their face are there bullies or whatever? Too bad. It's like, start taking that money out of those things. Those guys don't need those weapons. They don't need all that money. They don't need, you know, what they need is to spread these in the money into different aspects of our society in order to, um, you know, to facilitate all the problems that we have. Homelessness, education, all these huge <laughs> problems. It's like getting ridiculous. And it's not that hard to figure out. Um, well, you know, you know what, we'll dive a little further 
back into what, you know, everything else for the week, but Ernie, he's talked about education. I know there's, you know, you had a great idea and we never, I don't think we really dove into this. I've been trying to get to this aspect of, of an idea that you said you had going on for years about education for children, how you wanted to reform education in general because of, you know, what's going on with the side. So, so kind of fill us in, if you will, about some of the ideas that you and I have spoke about in the past. Well, it's, it's an, it's an idea that I, that I had um, years ago. I dreamt it, I think it was, and I wrote it down when I got up and it was like, you know, there's a, there's a really easy, first of all, I think that I, I, I agree with you, Patrick, on, 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 on your ideas. And I just wanted to acknowledge that. Um, Thank you. And, and I think that it goes a little, for, for me being on, for lack of a better way to put it, the side of the fence that I'm on, right? Um, I think that it's really important for us to address the, the fact that unfortunately, there are a lot of people that don't think that we're all normal or that we deserve to be normal at all. That's the problem. I think that that's what the great awakening is. If anything, if people are like, you know, because a lot of people predicted that something like this would happen at this time of, you know, in, in this time frame, and now it has, right? So um, that's the first thing I think for us to keep in mind that uh, although it seems logical to people like you and me that everyone is normal, a lot of people don't and never have thought that way. Yeah. So right. I, I would put that out there, you know, to begin with, because this fight is a lot more complicated than even it's looking on the surface and it's going to get deep right so anyway i just wanted to acknowledge you with that bit as far as what q was asking me yeah i feel as though um the reason that i wanted to say that, that first q was because uh the educational system in um poor neighborhoods specifically neighborhoods of people of color is like that by design you know what i mean so it, it it, there is a huge contingent of the populace that does want for that to be his, I mean, for that to be the case in neighborhoods of color. I don't think that it was anything that was per se overlooked or mis, misfunded. That's on purpose. And I think that's the next thing that is going to end up pissing a lot of people like us off who are awake to that kind of thing now. Yeah. Because now we've opened the Pandora's box because obviously we would think, well, um, it's obvious that people wouldn't be doing things like this on purpose, right? Right. Well, right. yeah, they are. And now that's going to be the next thing I think that's going to inflame everybody who's now awake to this movement even further when everybody starts to realize, wait a second, you fucking guys were doing this on purpose? Yeah. Right? That's the next thing. So um, where the educational idea is concerned that I had, it's called the the Light Tower Initiative. Um and I feel like I wanted to uh, get a platform in my life to sort of bring something like this to, to into movement. Basically, the Light Tower Initiative works like this. I think that when we look at the systemic issues that um, kids of color have, obviously, it begins in underfunded schools, right, where the teachers don't have the resources to teach the kids. So what happens is that people continue growing. The kids continue growing, you know. In the second grade, you're going to be more mature than you were in the, in the first and third, on and on and on and on, right? The thing is that if the educational system is failing you, then you now have kids who are fifth graders who are second grade level in reading right. or a second grade level in math and things of that nature. And what that starts to create is a cycle because once those kids start to get older and unnatural... Um, you know, a natural born ego and a human being starts to develop, there are insecurity issues that start to hit those kids and that becomes act out behavior. Now that's a very simplistic um, explanation of, of one aspect of the problem, but that's what I feel like the Light Tower Initiative uh, directly addresses, which is this. We constantly have this narrative that we're given that says, okay, um, well, we don't have the funding. We don't have the funding. We don't have the funding. Well, it, that's interesting because every year there's probably, I'm guesstimating here, but there's probably about 
300,000, 400,000, possibly more people that graduate from college, let alone the ones that leave without grad, but still have at least a high school level education, right? Right. Um, what would address the problems that I was that I was talking about was that what kids in the neighborhoods like that need is somebody to be their one on one guide through their educational life. In other words, if I, for example, were to be paid to take on one kid and I go, OK, I'm going to meet this kid when he's in the sixth grade. Now, me and that kid can have an understanding. Look, I don't care what your present reading level is. I don't care what your present math level is. My job is going to be to catch you up to where you are. And nobody needs to know what your math level was or your reading level was when we met. Because by the time you get to where you catch up with everyone else, no one cares. There's no, there's no ego blow that you need to take because no one's going to care how you caught up to everyone else. You do that, you become what in the initiative I'm speaking of is, would be termed their light tower. You become their light tower. Okay. Beautiful. You can get kids who are graduating from colleges all over the nation totally. and hire them to take one kid on. Well, that's like John Stewart said to do that is like, you have to like, it, like think of it like you have to put a year of service for your country. Now, you know, not everybody's going to join the army or the armed services, but one year of service to your country is an internship. And it's like totally, they should have things in, in every poor area of the country, but whether what color, what area, it doesn't matter. Helping people like, here's how you get medical help. Here's how you get your kids in a school. Here's how you keep your husband from beating you. Here's right. how you deal with drug addiction. I mean, all these things that nobody, it, like put them in a place where everybody can go to. I have a problem. Come in here. You know, it's like all the money that's wasted on giving billionaires tax breaks and arming the police like they're exactly. like SWAT teams. It's ridiculous. Well, exactly. and, 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 some, and you're saying, Ernie, something, you know, teaching the right, you know, like I said, changing up the, the curriculum even in certain aspects, right? Talk about exactly. it's like, like, um, not viticulture, what am I looking for? Just farming or like in general, right? Like, yeah. like, like doing, yeah. like implementing that stuff, like that you can use. And even, you know, there's some people I follow mm -hmm. online. I think his name's, it's kind of, you know, Riza Islam is his name. I've seen him and watched some of what he does, but you know, he's definitely a strong black man, follows Louis Farrakhan and, and, and that's kind of his approach on, on everything. Very strong. Right. But one thing that he talks about, you know, vaccines, he also talks about, um, um, you know, growing, you know, inner urban gardens, you know, inner city and growing your own food and doing things like that. And you had spoken to me about exactly that, about saying, you know, that'd be kind of a cool thing to be putting into our, our curriculum, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because I think that, you know, I work with kids who are, in, who are locked up in juvenile and things of that nature. And I'll tell you something, I, I found this to be the case 100% of the time. Nothing helps those types, for lack of a better way to put it, of kids um, more than making them feel like they be they're becoming smarter than their circumstances. That's the key to all of it right there. Making them feel like they're becoming smarter than their circumstances is where you start unlocking all kinds of doors for them. If we're going to go into these programs and teach them, you know, Abraham Lincoln was this, you know, George Washington was this, whether we want to um, accept that or not, there's already something intrinsically in those kids, in kids like me, for example, because so I'm, I'm not even gonna call them those kids, in, in kids like me, that we may not know all of the to the letter dates and times and quote unquote facts about those things, but we already know it's anti us. So why the hell do we wanna know about George Link, uh, George Washington. Why yeah. do we want? Why do we care to know anything about Abraham Lincoln? Yeah. 
Yeah. Why do we care, you know, you know to, to glorify the idea of a Christopher Columbus? And I think that that's where education goes wrong, which I think is what you were chiming in on, Q, that yep. if you, through a light tower initiative, you can use that time frame to, of course, beef up their math skills, beef up their English skills and things of that nature, but also intrigue them about the learning process by teaching them things that they know they wouldn't have learned in traditional school. Like, for example, why do we have to, as grownups, learn that, um, that Planned Parenthood began as a eugenics experiment? That's not a conspiracy theory. That's fact. Like, right. that's what it is. Right. The, the, uh, the original... Um, agenda of Planned Parenthood was to get rid of Black people, was to get rid of Mexicans, was to get rid of people who were disabled and things of that nature, who they considered undesirables. And, that they, later, and they, were in the Af they were in the African American community, wasn't it first set up there? Oh, yeah. And, and that first. later became Planned Parenthood. Right. Why should we not? Why should we not be taught those things? You see, because those things were directly geared toward Right. harming people like me right. right if we if we incorporated those kinds of things into education alongside of math alongside of financing by the way i the think credit, every credit, kid credit and everything else right of yeah. every socioeconomic echelon no matter what should be taught finances if it's going to be such a big deal in our culture Right. And we're not taught those things. I feel like you can bring people out of college and directly give them work by going, hey, would you be willing to go into a poor neighborhood and take on a kid from a trailer park in Mississippi, a kid from the projects? Another person can go, well, I live in New York City, so I would, um, you know, I would be open to tutoring or becoming a light tower for a kid in, in New York City. Uh, you know what I mean? It's like, kind of like, like it's kind of like a big brother. Yeah, aspect, exactly. right. But, well, it is. That's exactly right, right. what it is. But, but the thing well, is, when you when you have a you know when they put pennies into that stuff and then exactly. and try to like dog whistle it like as something like socialistic commie like yeah, bullshit. sure. And it's like that. Those are lobbyists and schnooks who like this is what I think a big part of this movement is about is like pushing those people aside and like enough is enough it's like let's let's do what you know bernie sanders i think unfortunately it was a broken record on some issues like it's like well, okay bernie we get it and then it's like well, what's your second album now you know what i mean it's like right. what are you going to do how are you going to do this but he's very right it's like billionaires and it's like all these people who got tax breaks before a pandemic you know all that money stuck in in, in you know in the in the ether and no one can use it and this country could use it more than ever now and all it's going to do is create more jobs more influence more positive like you know i mean think of all the, the the grains of sand that have slipped through our hands of like brilliance and artistic endeavor and all this stuff Absolutely. it's like i just don't understand why we we can't it's it, you know that quote of music i said was 50, over 50 years ago like well, I don't, I, don't, I don't yeah i don't i mean it's it's not without it's a it's it's there's people that don't want it to be done and that's why it's and, not, and we could do it overnight if if, if yeah, right. with the gun in our head we could do it overnight and it's like we've seen the changes and i think that that, that this supreme court thing today on the gay um coalition yeah, yeah. was like definitely helped by this you know by all these people of like every single walk of life in the streets going, no, no, we're tired of this. And I'll tell you what, if they would have like voted that down, they would have had a major oh. upheaval on that. It's like enough, it's like, well, all people are created, all men are created equal, equal yeah, bullshit. It's that's like, not, let's no. make that happen. Right. Well, well I think, I'm sorry. Yeah, you... No, no, please go ahead. Dar. Well, I, I think that um, what, in history, it repeats itself over and over that eventually the ruling class, whatever that means, you know, I'm using that term loosely because sure. I know that that's a, a, an inflammatory label that, you know, that people are over, um, you know, overusing these days, but whatever that means, whatever we want to call that thing, right? I think that it, over and over in history, there comes a point where the people that they're exploiting go, okay, we've had enough. And I'll tell you what, I um I agree with you on that, Patrick. I think that um 
what we're watching is only the beginning of the swell. Oh, yeah. Agreed. It's only the beginning yeah. because, like I said before, like you and I were talking about this right now, this, 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 the potential for this initiative. Imagine the fact that I'm, I doubt that I'm, in, I'm reinventing the wheel here. I doubt that I'm the first one to have thought of something like the Light Tower Initiative, right? So what we're going to eventually start to hit the wall on is realizing that people know that options like this are viable and still decided to give the police force billions of dollars instead. Right. Yeah. They, they still decided to give the police force billions of dollars where cops are untrained for their job, uneducated about their jobs, and that that's what they want. There was a case in Connecticut, I believe it was, about, uh, about 11 years ago that, I mean, rang my bell for weeks that I was following it. There was a cop, a, a gentleman who uh, applied for the police force, I believe it was in Connecticut, and um, got rejected because his IQ was too high. That was the basis. <laughs> That's the basis right. they gave. That's the basis they gave. The police department gave that basis. His IQ was too high. Wow. Okay. There's a, there's a. I don't know if you guys remember the Sarah Silverman show yeah. about ten years ago. You know, in an episode, she gets pulled over by a cop, and he's like, "Do you know why I pulled you over?" And she goes, "Because you got C's in high school." Uh huh. And um. The thing, uh, Doug Benson wrote that line, but I mean, I've been using that so much lately because it is absolutely true that they want to keep these guys as a fraternity does. I mean, it's like fraternities are, they're microcosms of like what this cop thing is. And it's a big fraternity. Yeah. And like, right. you know, my friend, my friend is a lawyer in Chicago. We were talking about Amy Klobuchar and I'm like, you know what? She didn't prosecute this guy and that makes her toast to be a VP and he goes do you know how hard it is to prosecute right. oh yeah because of the, police union. the union oh it's impossible and yeah. that has to change too because that's the thing it's like what's the point if you if these guys can never be in trouble then it's well, like we have to totally take it apart I think I think Patrick that's a great segue actually let's lead this into what happened in Atlanta and something that we did see that I did see you know right. they, they acted quickly Mm -hmm. I mean, pretty. I mean, this is pretty quick. I mean, on the grand scheme of, of what was going on, I mean, they already, you know, they're already talking about indicting and doing that stuff quickly, right? I mean, it seems pretty. And this was something that was even, I guess, a little more controversial in terms of somebody trying to take a weapon and trying to roll around in the ground and shooting at the cops. Guy shot somebody, kills them, and that was while he was, you know, even though he was, you know, wrestling with the cops. Mm -hmm. they, they're still making the move quick. It wasn't like what we saw and it still kind of took its time in Minneapolis. So it's actually, it's just already in, in, we see in that time frame. this wouldn't have happened two months ago or something like that. Right. Ernie, we were talking about yeah. our, if right. this came down the line, how would this have been seen two months ago and would, you know, maybe the African-American community might've seen it quickly and been like, yo, that's not right. That's not cool. Right. Mm -hmm. White community, what maybe would have been like, well, a little bit more he was wrestling with the, you know that type of thing it would have been a little more black and white literally right right i, I feel like um it's an interesting um i've i've actually mentioned this a few times to to some people so i'm getting text messages where people are like can i get the link to the show <laughs> um, uh, so i just hold on let me just make sure yeah, that that's but, and while you're doing that but think about this guys is that this weekend across America, I can guarantee you 500 people will eat, fall asleep in the line at a drive through I guarantee you, because it's like- I've done, I've done it three times, comedian, about, three times. Being a comedian, it's like the drive through drunken bit is as old as like Ben Franklin. You know what I mean? It's like, that is a bit that gets recycled, recycled, because so many people like go through drive throughs inebriated, be it, that's honest, and pass out. Do they need to die? Right. No, because the 500 people that will do this this weekend will all survive. Some of them will figure out how to get out of it. Some of them will like, you know, get busted, but it's like none of them will die. And it's like, that is the most ridiculous. I mean, honestly, cops should just hang out right at the drive-thru. Well, that's the, the thing. Bottom. It's like, a, a, that was my buddy's joke. It's like, 
I'll have two poppers, a blah, 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 this and that. You're under arrest. You know what I mean? Right. It's like for right. ordering that. Well, the, you know what I mean? It's like it's disgust. It's terrible. Right. I um I posted two different links this week on Facebook because I if you don't okay here's the thing Q you and I were talking about this before the show started so I, I think this is probably a good place to to sort of toss this right. idea if you don't hum, human beings have different impulses right and sometimes a person who has been drinking or what have you is going to have the impulse to run from a cop if they feel like they're about to get in trouble if you don't know how to handle that situation without murdering somebody go be a fucking barber right, right. go garden go fucking work at lowe's go do something else because that's just those are natural impulses that sometimes human beings who were drinking might have. First off, the guy had a kind conversation with you. You couldn't just walk him home. Yeah. You couldn't just walk him home. He was telling you, listen, my sister lives two blocks from here. I'm not driving right now. You know, it could have been on that cop to decide to split, to display a, a, a millisecond of humanity and say, okay, you know what? He's not drinking. He's not acting like a jerk right now. He's offering to, you know, a house two blocks down. Why don't I just take him home? No, I'm going to decide to become Billy Badass because that's the culture of policing where black yeah. communities are concerned. That's the culture. Well, I play judge and jury over what I feel about you right now. So I'm going to decide to take you in. So he fights it a little bit. Two of you couldn't subdue this guy enough to cuff him. That's a natural impulse that some humans are going to have. If you can't handle your job, go do something else. Well, are we? And you know what? And, and the thing is, we, I have a mutual uh, a friend of mine. We have a mutual friend that's a powerful cop um, back east. And like, I remember the guy got pulled over, and it's like you're going to jail for a DUI. You got pulled over. You did the test. You pe failed. You're going. Right. My friend texted our buddy, and guess what? He could actually see the cop getting the call from my uh, my buddy telling him, take him back to his car and let him go. And that's what he did. And it's like, don't tell me that doesn't happen a million times. So like crisis of, you know, like was that guy, you know, he wasn't putting handcuffs or anything. This stuff is like, well, it, it's okay. exactly, they are not the judge. They are not the jury. It is ridiculous. That It's like, so enough our, is enough. So our point, enough. right. I, and, and I agree. And I have to ask a question. I mean, because I've heard this you know, before is, is, are we going to get to a point where this is going to happen more by when, you know, with, with arrests and certain things, are people going to be pushing back a lot more on the police in general on things like this? I mean, is this going to be a commonality? Is this going to be a common occurrence is my concern. Right? And, oh, and, 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 and will that actually, I mean, could that help? Because I'm sure in the minds right now, this stuff's going to start happening and people are going to want to push you know, push the boundaries and push back a little bit more. So it's going to have to force. Is that going to be something that we see happening more and more and more? Okay. Or and, and another thing, sorry, but there was a white guy who was naked, who strangled yes. like three people. Mm -hmm. They got like 40 cops to, to, or like to get them. And they, they arrested him without incident. It's like, right. really? And nope. then the, the guy that went nuts in Paso Robles who started shooting at cops, they had like a, a brigade trying to find that guy. I mean, it's like, don't tell me these guys don't. It's they're, It's like, it's it's them protecting themselves from society. It's like they're playing a video game against society, not to per serve and protect. They're like protecting themselves. And it's like, what can we do? This is a mess. Well, yeah, it, it, and, and I, I agree with you, but, but, but what I would like to add is, is that it is a mess and that's how it's intended to be. Right, Right. exactly. Right? That's how it's intended to be. It's intended to stay that way so that goonish figures who maybe, like you said, got beat up when they were kids in the sandbox or got a girlfriend stolen from them by the local basketball star or something like that can then grow up to become cops and have almost no limitations total protection on anything they want to do and now go into these specific neighborhoods with the agenda of being the biggest goon on the block. Yeah. That's how it's 
purposely done. That's how it's purposely yeah. designed. So that's why sometimes like I'll hear in one of my shows, I think Q, you saw smoke and in one of my shows, there's this point where I'm like, you know, it really drives me insane when people say like there are conferences that are held around the country and stuff like that. And there's, you know, like the system is broken. The system is not broken. It is doing exactly what it is intended to do. It is functioning exactly the way it was meant to function. Yep. That's the cool thing is that now there's so many other people who are starting to go, wait a second, why is that happening? And the rest of us are going, yes, yes, this is what's been going on. Like, um, I think to answer your question, Q, I think that a lot of people are going to begin to start pushing back. I do. As far as what happened to, to Rayshawn, unfortunately, that's always been how it is where you know where somebody right. like him is concerned or somebody like where i grew up it's always been like this man well, and, always. but now but now it's going to force and that's exactly it now something like that okay so the last one was just some, i mean both of these blatantly deaths right one down somebody's neck this one somebody was wrestling around so just kind of like this okay well what if well you know what you know blah 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 but the bottom line is the restraint and de-escalation aspect of it right i mean you he's running away okay great you lost him i don't know maybe there's something to be embarrassed about as a cop if you lose somebody which well uh, he was firing that thing well, I, I understand tased. i understand yeah. but you, you, okay so that's the other argument that you hear right well he, what if he would have tased him and he would have got mm -hmm. the weapon and he could have shot him and he could but he's running away running backwards mm -hmm. anyway the, the level that we go back on it now yeah. um that in that point it's just like we said right i mean do you you got, you call another cop car, you call a helicopter, somebody's on the loose, you go ahead, but just to shoot them, right? I mean, right. it's just something, it's just to shoot first. That's I mean, what I'm saying. I mean, what about, and I don't understand why, what about, and I know this sounds whatever, what about like sleepy darts? You know what I mean? Like, like animal tranquilizer. Like, I know it sounds messed up to be careful. Right, what about something that you throw that gets tangled up in his feet and makes him trip and fall? Yeah, I, I mean, I mean, simple things are like, I mean, and I know it sounds, it's animalistic, right? Or we're going hunting or something like that. But at, at the same time, and so maybe that's getting in people's heads, but I'd rather get shot with a dart in my neck and be out cold in 30 seconds and you have somebody done than to have, you know, something like that. And does that stuff exist? I know it's crazy, but. Well, and also, how about we don't let that situation get to that point in the first place? Look, the guy wasn't hostile. Right. No. He, no. he was being a gentleman about what For was 20 happening. 20 minutes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, how yeah. about, okay, listen. Talk. Man, I'm going to give you. Right. How about we just, you said just now, I'll, I'll make a deal with you. If your sister is three blocks away, like you say, let me drive you there. I'll drop you off. Come back and get your car in the morning. If you're lying to me, I'm taking you in. At least that's fair. Right. At well, least that's fair. And, and, and again, now we could say that, and, and that's an easy, I mean, not it's not easy, right? For us that understand how to motivate and move and, and make situations happen, that makes sense, right? But obviously that divide of where that, you know, in 20 years, that, that seems to be something that would be kind of a normal thing, right? I mean, right now, it's it's the program well right now it's the program right i mean the ones it's almost like the it would almost be like the nfl switching to flag football overnight mm. i mean how I, how I mean, and you, you understand what I'm saying? And, and try to put that in but how do you go from and and in both sides of the spectrum for for those expecting to get hit and those hitting how do you get them to both go you know what this is how it's going to be now after well, all those years of training you know well, in my, in, in my opinion, I think that, that that speaks to a good point. It's like, you know, when it comes to the, the, the idea of people, because, right, that could have also not uh, resulted in a murder. It could have just ended up in brutality, and that wouldn't have been cool either, right? right? So, right. so I, I think that my first instinctual response to that kind of thing is that there's a lot of us that are like, look, we realize that the change is going to be uncomfortable. Tough shit. Yeah, no, it's due. I mean, it has to happen. I mean, I'm not yeah. saying that. It has to happen, right? Yeah. I mean, you know but but just trying to put it in perspective of where we are at. And it's yeah. the right, it's where your head, what you're saying is the right way to think about it. I mean, I, it, to be able to have a community and have something in there. And even, you know, I think I brought this up on the first show was talking about how my dad said, you know, walking the beat you know, and hanging out one of the, when they got in the cars, that's when the, the, the communication between the community started going away. But if we had some kind of started a liaison program of sorts, right, right. where there's certain guys without weapons that are maybe floating around the neighborhoods that are just, a, uh, you know, 
concierge or something like that for the community. Right. You know, right. There, there could have been somebody that like, say, for example, I don't know what Ray Sean's history was in terms of his alcohol, right? May, it, say if he was like, this is just an, a, a one sure. possible idea, right? Say that Ray Sean was an alcoholic and he has a sponsor. Okay, then the first person that gets called, if it's the cop, sponsor. Okay, I'm going to call your sponsor right. and I'm going to have your sponsor come down here sure. and take you where you need to go. That you know what I mean? Like yeah. I think that there has been such a, a culture that says, "Listen, bottom line, this is my country, and I'm gonna put the the iron fist down every and anywhere that I see possible." So if I come up to you and I'm a cop, you need to do whatever I say you do, period, or else you're gonna die, and I'm gonna be looked at as correct for it. That shit gotta go. Right. That shit got to go, man. <clears throat> okay, but, but so the guy, let's say, you know, let's say he's drunk. Um, he gets booked for DUI. You know, it costs how many thousands of dollars? Lawyers. It, that's also a scam that they're putting sure. through people. Now, anybody who's related to somebody who's been killed by a drunk driver would be like, no, it's not. And they should right. be. And I agree. It's like, but there are other ways instead of just like throwing people into a frying pan. And now, for example, I knew a guy back in Chicago who was a very gifted actor at Second City. A lot of people thought he was going to be the next um, uh, John Belushi. So he came from a, an affluent mixed, you know, his mom was Argentinian, his dad was Italian, but they were, they were doctors, you know, they lived in a nice part of the suburbs. He was dealing cocaine uh, in little bits and they set him up to, to, you know, how they set people up to arrest the higher thing so he he was busted and this is like in the 90s for um an ounce of cocaine which i don't think is a ton um and uh he well, did two and a half years yeah i know q's like huh? uh, <laughs> that's one uh, sitting that's one sitting just kidding he's just. like that's like that's like going backstage with black sabbath for a half hour um no but he he did two and a half years and it screwed him up for life. He's now, he is gone, rest in peace. Like it, it messed him up. And it's like, think about that. Okay, that's the conversation that even, hasn't even come up yet with all this stuff to the, to the degree, I think that it will, is all this prison reform and all these, all these bullshit like guys going and doing 10 years for selling a pound of weed or something ridiculous. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, that's yeah, the but, next yeah, thing. But that's, just, that's a scam though too. You want to talk about a moneymaker. I mean, right. privatize, and all these prisons privatizing, we're making money uh, off of like, killing. yeah, 50, 000, putting 40, these guys $50,000 a year per, a per something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, who pays for it? To put these guys in a Roman Coliseum where all they end up doing is killing each other and like it getting worse at whatever negative thing is implemented on them. There's no like, they're not being cured or like, I mean, there's a, this isn't Shawshank Redemption where mm -hmm. there's a great monologue at the end. It's horrible and it's the way they're doing is terrible. And it's like, uh, you know, and you think that stuff happens in like, you know, the, the people in these mental institutions and these prisons are like, they're beating the shit out of these guys in prison too and killing them. I mean, it's like, and that's a whole nother mess that they have to deal with. Well, it comes, I think that that's also another reflection of the, you know, respect my authority freaking sure. um, element to, to the society that we live in. That it's like, okay, if my answer to you stepping out of line is to become more brutal. Okay, then you step out of line again. My answer is to become more brutal. Instead, of, you know what I mean? Like that's, that's the, I think that that's a mental illness that kind of permeates this culture in a mm -hmm. bunch of ways. A lot of us don't suffer from it, but the, the problem is that a lot of us don't have to. Yeah. All, in, all you need is for a small, I mean, if you think about it, population wise, we outnumber the cops by <clears throat> what? 50, 60, 70, 80 times, maybe, maybe more than that. Yeah. So you don't really need that much. You don't need that many people to create a really fucked up culture for the rest of the populace. Right. Right. I mean, in New York City, there's what I think on I, I'm guesstimating here, but there's about 30,000 cops. Yeah. Well, there's, I, nine I, million, there's nine million people in New York. I'd like to yeah. put out a number. I'd say it takes about one percent. Yeah. 
to you know go what? ahead and make it make it what it is right if we want to go into the what what is what is this really seem to be accustomed to or who's the designers right and of the situation it's it's got to be for a cause for a purpose. okay well, so, so uh, here so who the, another person to like really like blame and all this stuff is the media because i was explaining to my kid who's you know who just turned 14 i was saying it's like okay the politicians ask uh, ask me for money every day i get i get emails constantly so they can have money to to um campaign campaign and basically commercials so mm -hmm. the, the commercials that we have to watch so we're the ones that have to watch for the things that we're paying for and it's like and then the media companies are the ones that get paid it's yeah. like how yeah. about some of the like here, this is like citizens united shit <clears throat> if you if i give q runs for off q is going to run for dog catcher in santa monica next year <laughs> and I'll probably run again. It will no, he'll run unopposed. Yep. <laughs> okay. So Q runs for dog catcher in Santa Monica. Half of the, his money should go to something instead of all going to media implores Inc. You know what I mean? Because it's like we're giving so much money to CNN to Fox. It's like it's a, the joke is on us. Well, maybe, we're maybe dummies maybe, giving maybe, them all that money to run these stupid yeah, commercials. But, Maybe, maybe we can maybe we can do a thing like if you're like in alaska and you have pipelines and you get oil maybe they could give us back a percentage and we all get checks for all the advertising that are done right. you know no, percentage no, of no the money goes to like to the the corner concierge you're talking about those people around the corner they're going to help that lady with three kids sure, and no that's what father I mean. that's what i'm saying need like my kid is gifted in math. Right. I can't teach him. I don't know. I, I'm un uneducated. Help me get well, my kid no, into a situation. Yeah, the lighthouse. The lighthouse situation or something like that. We yes. get you know, to that, right. Q, to, to, to chime in on something, you know, exactly what you just proposed, that's exactly what Muammar Gaddafi was doing in his country. Just hmm. why I, that's exactly what he was doing. That he evil dictator. I'm not going to get into that because that's a whole separate thing. But right. Patrick, I wanted to touch on something else that you said, which I agreed upon as well. Um, you know, I don't want to go too far into in, into a politics discussion because I'm sure yeah. that would take a whole Zoom yeah. cast in and of itself. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, you know, when you talked about the problem that the mainstream media is, this is my, just one of my viewpoints on that whole thing. Okay, think about this. The mainstream media has, in one form or another, existed in this country for about 60 years, right? Correct. Let's say that's safe, you know, yeah. right about safe. In oh, that we, I'm years, sorry, we're going to say anything like like newspapers, like Rothschild? Like, yeah, I mean, like, like television gotcha. specific, okay. right? Television, like newscasters in specific. Now, that's evolved over time, and it's become what it is now, but that's a whole, also a whole other Zoom cast, right? But... This is what I, this is a thought that I've always wanted to offer. You know, you look at the main stream media stations like CNN and Fox, obviously those are the two, right? But and MSNBC, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. These people have, have are, are building upon a 50 slash 60 year history of learning to manufacture a whole bunch of people's opinions about something. Not going to get into Noam Chomsky or anything like that. That's yeah. not where I'm going. Sure. I'm just yeah, gonna, yeah, yeah. It's one thing, right? Um, that they're masters at knowing how to manipulate what people want to believe, right? Right. And if you look at 2016, even CNN gave billions and billions of dollars in free advertising to the person who is now occupying the White House. Correct. They didn't know. Well, they didn't well know. listen, it's big, big, big money. He's brought, you know, it's good, it's good TV. Like, like, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So they right. didn't know that there was a possibility. This is what they do. This is what they do. And this is something that they've been learning to do for 60 years to get millions of people to end up on a specific track. They didn't know. Well, listen, was... like like this one thing I watched a while back. We watch we watch channels. We get channeled, right? Channels on the TV. We get we got uh, we got programming on the TV and the television. Mm -hmm. Right, the television we watch, right. you know, all these things. So you're talking about programming down the line. It's been set up for us right from the right from the start, right? Yeah, but you know, yeah. back in the day, like when Walter Cronkite was was helming the news, that they, they took it as a loss. You know what I mean? Like, well, they, that was news. That, that, yeah, that was news. That was that was 
that it wasn't paid for, right? Right. And then <laughs> and he never made an opinion about anything until the Ted offensive. He goes, "This is a joke. We're the, we're not going to win it. They're just going to come back and and like fight us again." It's like, why are we slaughtering all these young people? Like, and he was right. And then that ch- that's when it kind of went like. Well, you know, and, and there's and, probably some guy like, oh, my God, we got to start doing that all the time. I want to segue into something else real quick because we're time is moving here. But we're talking about the media and, and coverage or lack thereof of certain situations. Right. Talk about now. As disgusting as this is, these coincidental suicidal hangings that are becoming a thing yeah. across the country now. Right. I mean, what do you say? Bronx right now? Uh, one, one, one person outside of Manhattan Park in New York City. Two people out here in California, in Victorville and in uh, Palmdale. Found in yes. front of the library and the city hall. In the city hall. Like, uh, you know, we, we talked about this a little bit before we went on. That shit has me furious. Right. Well, and it does. And it's not being covered to the fullest extent here. It's really no, interesting. No, it's not. And, and the interesting thing about that is that there's already the initial, whoa, 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 whoa you know, it's likely this was a suicide. Really? Let me, just as a, just as a person of color, let me explain something. Okay. In the day and age, when the media is getting a foot up its backside right now, when the judicial system is getting a foot up its backside right now, when the police force is getting a foot up its backside right now, these black gentlemen and one woman in South Africa, these black people are going to choose now to hang themselves for some political reason. That's exactly what gets deep in my, um, in my craw about uh, stations like Fox and stuff that their immediate thing is to absolve, is to attempt to absolve whoever it was that might have done this, whoever the situation was, then, you know, when they get caught, then they go, well, now we have to call them what they are. But the first thing is, no, there might be a, a, a decent reason why this is. No, we've been watching this for 400 years. Um, they were lynched. Right, right. They I mean, lynched. yeah, right. How can you, how can oh, you... They were lynched. Right. How can you say that, I mean... I, it's it's one of the most eerie feelings. It's all I mean, and, and even it okay. And the first thing, obviously, suicide. You make it run. So now you're beating down the mentality, right? You're making it look as bad as it can. It's almost it's almost reminded me of they had to tell George to say that George Floyd had COVID, right? I mean, like, why? Or that he was a drug addict, or that he yeah. was this, or that he was yeah. I mean, it's just trying to. It's trying to. It seems like it seems like it's trying to now. And I've got to ask the question, what if they say it is suicide? What if, what if they come back a suicide? What does that, what does that do? Do they have to come back and say murder? And if they didn't, and they really did their job and they actually, and we say they did their job and they come back and say it's suicide. What is there a trust? Is there, you know? Well, what that's going to do is it's going to further exa- exacerbate the mistrust that people already have for the judicial system, first off. Secondly, what it's also going to do is it's going to take the heat off of whoever these backwood folks might be who are doing this. So then when they do it again, it's like, oh, okay, I guess we weren't right on that. I guess it was. So now we got to go. It's infuriating. Well, and either way, either way, in a sense, whoever did this almost it, assuming this is done purposely and somebody did this and there was lynchings going on, they, they almost win no matter which direction you kind of go with this in some weird way, in a certain sense, where they get their point across in a really fucked up way. Well, that I, depends. Almost, but I mean, I mean, so it's like, or, or it's, it's like, it's getting, it's the, like the biggest thing that somebody could do as like an attack on, on, I mean, on the situation yeah, right now. I, I think that what we'll see, this is just a guesstimate on my part. Somewhere along the line, we're going to find some white supremacist hanging from a tree. I'm telling you that's going to happen. Like, I, yeah, we're right. Gonna see that, we're going to see that happen someplace, right? 
because I think that what's happening is that these are all reverberations and reactions to a changing society. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I feel like it's yep. like, to me, Trumpism, if you want to call it that, because I, you, we can't blame Trump for this. Like, no, it's, it's there. I mean, it's, it's not like he's, yeah. Yeah, he didn't create it. Right. Well, he, yeah, but you know what, though? Well, but he, here's but the he thing. It's, it's been there. It's been there. It's right. Been, but uh, this is the buttons. This Maybe. was something Joe Biden said that I really, you know, because it's like people are giving him a lot of shit and like, but he goes, yeah, it's not Trump, but it's like he breathes the air into he these does. people. Sure, and there's does. no question about that. He and does. I think that's, and I, I will not like, like, that's a reality. He has given them life. And when he said there are people on both sides, that was a huge awakening for those people to go, hey, guess what? we're on like we've right. got and like and he he ramped it up so yes it was there i mean but it's there you know, it was there no, I mean, it was yeah. there, no question but what i'm saying is that what you know i have friends who are on both sides of this fence right you know i'm sure that you guys do too sure. right i have friends who kind of are on both camps in this right yep, yep. and when things like that started to happen like you know, there's very fine people on both sides and it just so happens that I'm enacting a Muslim ban and it just so happens that it's brown people in cages at the border. Even though when you talk to them, you start to figure out, like, wait a second, so you said the invasion was staged, but yet there's a whole bunch of people in cages. So which yeah. one is it? But again, that's a whole nother Zoom cast right there. <laughs> yeah, we got a few what more. I was, what I was trying to, to, ex or to exhibit to a lot of my friends who were, staunchly on that side of the fence. I said, you know, I think that whatever this contingent is that you're supporting is going to get a rude awakening, which is that it is not 1940 anymore. It is not 1950 anymore. And I think that you're already seeing rudimentary elements of that, which will bring me around to the point that I made about somebody else hanging from a tree. Because like, for example, you've seen how staunch and how prepared for violence people on that side of the fence seem to be, right? right. They're all talking about, not all, but a lot of them talking about civil war and that kind of nonsense, yep. right? Yep. As soon as the quote unquote other side got pissed off enough to hit the streets, where were they to protect their president? You know why they weren't there? Because they didn't, factor in how big the opposition sure. yes. actually is they yeah. didn't fathom that because they were in a bubble for a long period of time where only they were talking about any kind of violence so it's like well we're the ones with all the guns we're the ones with all the military but no actually you're not right so how does that relate to these hangings i think that this is metaphorically uh uh um that latent contingent going, let me dip my toe in the pool and see how much I can still get away with. Sure. That's what these lynchings, in my opinion, are on a subconscious level. That that contingent of America is like, well, you know, I I'm still gonna, you know, kind of buck against the system by going, see, this is how we used to do. Right. Now, when a couple of you end up hanging from somewhere you're going to realize that the rest of the world has moved on from that viewpoint and that means people of a lot of different races have moved on from that viewpoint you are the minority and your your um q you and i were talking about this before that narrative if you notice trump's narrative is losing now yeah everything he does falls out from under him at this point he yeah, acted like it's... really badass about the military and the military turned on him yep you know he tried that stunt with the evangelicals and the bibles and evangelicals started to turn on him yeah it's reflective of an entire subconscious culture that is seeing itself dying off and hey sorry for you now you know, I, and, and, and my question is is that are the people turning on him are, are they really turning on him or is it is it the media? It's the media saying that they're turning on. They're turning. Well, they're, Q, I'm, I'm just, I, I, look, I'm just because I know there's listen, people out there that no matter here, what. Here's on, what I believe. Hold on. I yeah. understand. I understand. But no matter what happens, there are people that we know, and no matter what happens, nothing he can do is wrong. Correct. But 
Here what here's what the military, what Ernie was saying is like when the generals come out and say, I'm sorry, I should I did that thing with him, and, and they're like the, the people, the generals that worked for him are like, he's incompetent, this and that. Basically, that's what their dog whistle to say. If this guy tries to say it was rigged or he would should be staying in office, we're gonna pull his ass right out of that fucking house. Yeah, I, and I they will that. do that. And that's what I believe because they, they you know, it's like we have a country. It's like we can't like be at each other's throats in, in this like Trump versus like liberal thing. And the and 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 I know we're almost done, but like um uh a friend of our other show, Lori Kilmartin, mm-hmm. uh her mom who like she always did a joke about like wanting to kill her mom because she's like this old Fox News watching pain in the ass mom who went to a uh, elder facility for something a couple weeks ago caught coronavirus and at any moment it, I mean she may have passed while we were talking and she's been doing t- trying to do funny tweets which are a little they're very dark but they're very apropos and like one of the things she said she took a picture of was all the Fox like commentator books that her mother had bought, purchased and read. She's like, I can't wait for this bonfire. And that was like all those mm-hmm. books of like those kooks. And it's like the older the older voting block, which is a lot of the baby boomers that have aged, you know, to, into their 70s and 80s you know, who they get every single one of those one thing they do more than anything else is vote. And they're all going away. And it'll be very interesting to see in a couple of years, once a big chunk of that voting block is gone, to vote for like, conservative, scaredy cat, I watch Fox News. I mean, hopefully, this will be like, you know, a new period for like, you know, people to get up and do things. You know, one of my favorite Barack Obama things was like, he was like, you know, this is a hard job. Why don't you go run for office? Let's see you do it. And I was like, exactly. All these assholes on social media, it's like, go run for office. See how easy it is. Well, go out there I, and tell them your and thing. I think, and I think understanding the political aspect, I mean, it's, that's, I think you're right on point. I think going back to everything we're seeing right now, we are at a point where power to the people and right and the people are are just good. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it's, there's going to be a wave coming and, if it's not done right, the wave will just envelop <laughs> everything along the way, right? I, I yes. I joked with a friend of mine the other day, and I said, you know, 2016 was the year that um, that the white Cubs was, that yeah, <laughs> that's what have told you everything, right? <laughs> um, but it, it's it's the year that uh, a, a a lot of white folks realized they should have been listening to their friends of color all along. <laughs> yep. Yes, indeed. You know what I mean? Yep. <laughs> well, it was yep. like, you know, we weren't, we weren't thousands, tens upon thousands of us lying using the same narrative, you know? So I'll tell you something. Again, this is a total Zoom, separate Zoom cast. I don't think Trump's going to lose in November. I don't. Well, but look, yeah. But I do. If he does, I think it's going to lose. We're headed for a powder keg no matter which direction. This Wait, goes. So, well, listen, we get September, October. It's going to be a shit show. Like, well, whoever you know, wins is going to cause a powder keg. It doesn't matter which way we go here. It's going to cause a powder keg no matter what. The thing is, I don't know. Okay, he if he wins, it's going to be because he cheated somehow. And you notice none of the Democrats are saying anything about that. Well, are you trying to let him win? Like, shouldn't this be the narrative? Shouldn't this be something you're shouting out to everybody to try to? Well, maybe they are talking and it just depends. And right now they're, they're taking a different route in that. I mean, there's a lot of different avenues, right? There's well, there's, there's th- over terms. three months well, left. Well, there's over, well, you're right. But I'm saying there's, there's talking going on and there's pushing going on and there's, you know, well, they don't need to say much. Now there's, it could be the media is pushing a, a certain narrative without having to say. Yeah, but it's like he's right? the guy's in such a hole right now. I really don't believe that he's going to pull himself out. And he wants to do those big, those, uh, those big like Nazi rallies and stuff. And it's like he can't do them because it's like, oh, but it'll get a zillion people sick. And then, then, then those cities have to pay for all that, you know, when those people show up at the hospital. Yeah, but like, uh, but wait, yeah, but wait a second here. But yet, but yeah, we've got fifty thousand people in the streets out here protesting. But then they're going to go ahead. They're not signing waivers over there. So let's talk about that for a second. And that kind of that is something that's unique. That's true. That's true. 
What's that? Yeah, but I mean, look, but look, yeah, but what's it? Look at look what they're doing. It's like they're protesting something that's no, that's I, a century I, life I changer. I, I no, get the, it. Trump is just bringing I, out his McDonald's gang, like. I understand. Yeah, 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 yeah. I understand. I understand. I'm not saying that, but that is certainly an interesting view to me that that's how it's got to be, whether it is protest. And I'm not, look, I'm not saying that's right or this is right or that's right, but it is pretty unique to me that they can have a gathering, call it whatever you want. Yeah, that they, size, they certainly. Then, well, and the same thing. You can have protests going on the street, but you can't go into restaurants. <laughs> you right, know, and have, was, and, whatever. And, we can go into directions on that. And but, there's a lot to be said for that, right? Like, you know, look, I, I hope that I'm wrong, but I'll say this much too, though. I like my racism right out in the open. Thank you. And <laughs> I think I'm that, laughing. That's, no, yeah, I mean, you know right. what I mean? I, I like yeah. my racism right out yeah. in the open. Thank right. you so much. Because if Trump loses, I wonder whether this whole extra contingent of things goes right back to sleep with Joe Biden at the helm. And that's counterproductive to where we're headed. That's yeah, but wait a second. Well, look, well, he look, gets, look if he, hold if on. He, he gets was, someone he was, there, like, he, was there, he was there for eight years with Barack, and things kind of whatever. But did a lot really get done? Uh, no, not not anything that would have necessarily benefited the people. So sure, there was some rights that were given, sure. and those things to me are like oh, I mean, okay, and, and, so, and 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 uh, insurance and certain things. But you know what I'm saying in terms of the grand. Yeah. And things like, and I get it. Look, Trump is a damn disaster, and he needs to go. Right. Okay. Right. There, there are some positive things about his presidency, though. But again, that's a whole nother. Yeah. I, am yeah. no Trump right. supporter. I am no Trump supporter. Right. But I'm also, you know, I try to stay rooted. Well, in that's Trump. what we're doing this for. This is what we're doing yeah. this for. We gotta. I mean, but there are some positive things that have come out of Trump's presidency. Like, look, the distrust for the mass media. Mm, you got to kind of give him a thumbs up on that. I, I, yeah, I, but he lives by that. I mean, look at who, like the Fox, you know, Roger Ailes was his buddy. It's like, oh, but, but they are the biggest BSers of all. Yeah, but it's I true. Agree. But it's true. All the media. And, and, the, and the thing is, here's the other, here's the other the, the thing about 2010, when Barack Obama got crushed in the, in the Congress, because, you know, all those nut cases came out of the woodwork to vote against him. They didn't care. They just wanted the Republicans. So like he got that health care thing through. And that was the one thing he got when he and it's like and I think it was like he, you know, he had to pick his battles. And it's like they came at him like a ton of bricks. And like, you know, and, and again, the left didn't come out and vote in those elections. And like, that's the thing. It's like America has become a lazy, complacent place where people stare at devices like a third of their day, a third of their day they sleep, and a third of their day they're like in a daze. And it's like Sounds we like are being controlled by the billionaires who create all this stuff for us. And it's like, you know, the, 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 we, everyone needs to wake up on so many levels. You can't just wake up on one level and think everything's going to be all right. You have to like get the phones out of the hands of these people. Like, well, you know, well, 25 listen, years old, listen, you have a phone in your we, hand nonstop. There's a lot of pretty lights out there and we like pretty lights, man. I mean, as, as a, as a per people, we like to look what? at pretty things. You know, you just lost my vote as dog catcher. Well, <laughs> listen, <laughs> I'm just saying that, that that's the Good idea. That's that, there's lots going on. Oh, Oh, look, look at this. Yeah. Oh, I mean, we got st- yeah. we got pretty lights everywhere. Clicks, well, clicks. Give me the clicks. That's yeah. money. Clicks, clicks. All right, clicks. all right. So let's we're getting we're getting on, past our time a little bit here. But I just any last words. This has been a great. I just want to try to jump in here. It's been a great. I mean, we can go on for another hour and a half, but we got to we got to put a line in it. But I think all it's right, been- I'll go first and let Ernie close it up. Okay, sounds uh, good. First of all, these are, this is a great talk. Um, you know, like I again, it's like the, the white community needs to shut the fuck up and listen. Number one, we got to get people out to vote. Um, even if we, you know, we start a path to political uh, uh, reconstruction. I mean, it, like, I know it's like a lot of people are like, oh, what's Biden going to do? They couldn't do it then. But it's like, you know, we're, we're working, let's walk, we're walking up the stairs, but let's walk up the stairs. And, um, you know, and like positive energy, put some of that money towards the people. You know, it's like, all these people that why do you think they're damning socialism all the time? Oh, so it's like put it's like uh post office, firemen, police, um, you know, half of the things we do in life are based on a socialism aspect. But that stuff needs to be 
de demonized and like give people back the money to help themselves. What's the whole point of like taxes if you can't use them? If it's like, if we can only give them to the things that like politicians are forced to because of lobbyists. I mean, it's like that whole thing is a mess. And that also, that's, that's, that's that a stone whole needs to be turned over and see what bugs are underneath. Because to me, that's a big part of this mess. And it's like uh, African-Americans built half of this, I would say, two thirds of this country or more, you know, on their backs and their, their descendants need to get a break and to get a little help out. And it's like, I'm tired of this shit. It's like, you know, MLK said it in 68. It's like, give us some boots to pull up. It's like, I'm just tired of it. It's like, start working for the people instead of against the people. And All that's right. why I believe that Trump is, is affected by a Russian, you know, all right. So, all right. Okay, I'm done. All right. Done. Yeah. All right. All right. We're, yeah, that was, that was sorry, good. Q. I didn't, I, I didn't, ask my for, again. For, I didn't ask for last novel. <laughs> last. I learned it from you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No, that was great. Seriously. All right. All right. Ernie, what you got? Um, well, I, you know, there's, there's so many things that I could say here, but I, I'll try to touch quickly on a few things. Um, for one, you know, I, I I have a lot of people of different cultures all over my life. I'm, you know, probably not that unusual in that regard from socioeconomic to literally geographical, you know, to religious. And, and I'll, I'll say this much, you know, for one thing, I wonder how, um, how prepared a lot of the, you know the 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 white people that have now finally started to 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 sit back and go oh shit they were telling the truth this whole time well i don't like this either and now i wonder how prepared they are for the pandora's box that just opened because this goes way deeper than just police brutality sure. it goes way deeper than that now the box is open Wide and open. Then people are listening yeah. so i wonder how how much people are going to be prepared to take you know and, and i say that as a generalization there are a lot of white people who are clued into what the fuck has actually been going on in this country so but i mean for, for, the, for, the, for the, the 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 new joining populace for lack of a better way to put it i wonder how prepared they are to find out what's really going on because it, it, this is such a deep and multi-layered. That's why I I appreciate opportunities to come on Zoomcast like this because now that, for lack of a better way to put it, they believe us. There's a lot we got to tell you. There's a lot we got to tell you. There's a lot of shit that has been going on in your name that you have no clue about, probably. There's a lot of shit that has been going on right here in your own country, in your name. And now a lot of people are going, oh, fuck that. I want to know. It's an ugly thing. And I think that, um, that casts like this are really um, helpful toward that conversation um, where the possibility of helping is concerned that that gentleman in Atlanta has... Um, a GoFundMe because his family doesn't have the money that they need to fight the case. Yeah. So yeah. you can go find that and help out if you can. Throw in three bucks, five bucks, whatever you can to help their legal fund. Good call. Because obviously, again, like we were talking about before, the police unions are very strong and they're going to need an unusual amount of savvy on the prosecutor's case to be able to even get justice about this sure. right so there's that um where where things are concerned politically i know i'm just kind of recapping everything that we talked about and just sort of touching bases look sure. you know um I, I i would love to continue talking about that and bringing other people that i know who would be helpful to this conversation on board to say hey listen you know the political aspect of this whole thing you know, the fervor that we have right now because Trump is in office might actually be healthy for our cause. I mean, look at how just in the last, 
I don't know, three weeks. Right. Look at how much the rest of the populace has ransacked the system into deforming police departments, causing a conservative Supreme Court body to side with LGBTQ rights. Yeah. I mean, just a discussion of, you know, well, you know, Antifa and cops having military funding and all of this kind of stuff, that maybe wouldn't have happened under different circumstances. Right. So I just like people to stay open to the idea of what actually might be the best thing or not the best thing sure. in the country. And, you know, um, we'll be here to talk shit. Right. <laughs> anybody who's awesome. in here. Well, and so I, I'll obviously go down the line here. My last little, my last little thing is something we talked about earlier. Understanding that you know times are tough right now on the me in the media front, right? And I've had a lot of friends that have decided to basically boycott social media and jump off and say, "I'm done." Oh yeah, Facebook. I'm I'm oh wait, we're on Facebook. Well, so this is what. So I'm my thing is right now is I understand why. I get it. We're looking at TV. We're looking at this. We're looking at that. But of all the times to say I'm done now, I understand getting off social media and stuff like that. And I'm not knocking anybody for doing it. To each their own, they got to do their thing. But right now I feel like out of all the times, and you can be selective of how you look and find the information you're getting. But I think it's really important that we don't dip our heads in the sand at this time. I think it's one, it's easy to do. Yep. And it's easy to say because it's uncomfortable. And in general, with conversations we have, and relationships we have in general with people. One of the things we do sometimes is we don't want to deal with the anxiety. So we don't talk about it and we don't, and it's normal. I just, I just hope and understand that people, again, not saying sit and watch CNN all day, sit and watch Fox, look at your phone all day. But I think being connected right now is one of the most uncomfortable things in certain aspects and comfortable depending on where you're coming from. And if it, if it is that it's an opportunity to look at yourself and say, why what's uncomfortable about it? Is it, is it that it's just the information or is it something else that you just don't like? Or is it, it's an interesting thing that I've done for myself and I've looked at that. So I know how, what I'm saying, and I'm not sure if it's coming across the right way, but it's something for me in terms of, of that, that I just wanted to put out there for people to see. Now, I really appreciate it tonight. Ernie, I know we are talking about, you've got a buddy for next week. I, I think it's really important. I think we need to continue this. I think Monday nights has evolved. It was mindful Mondays and it was great. We did something a little different. Now we're kind of evolving, evolving into this platform which i think is really important and needs to continue 100 percent um and we as long as we're available i would like to continue this so um so coming up we'll, we'll you know we'll do this hopefully again next monday at the same time 7 p.m q loves you all um and also uh you know for anybody out there and, and the softer side on thursdays we're going to try to keep some balance like i keep saying james moses black a couple weeks ago was talking about make sure we keep our sense of humor and you know find that stuff we got to keep our Thursdays open. So we're still doing comedy, throw down Thursdays, eight o'clock, same channel. Uh, feel free to come back and try to get some laughs and, and take a little breather at that time. But you guys really appreciate you. Patrick Ney, thank you very thank much you, for Q. coming out. Absolutely. Thank you, Ernie. Ernie De Silva, really Thanks appreciate you guys. Me. Absolutely. Everybody out there watching, thank you very much. And share away. Please share this up. Get the word out there. Send some people back. We appreciate you watching. And listen, you can DM me or social media, whatever. Send a message. If you got questions or something you want to talk about on any of the other broadcasts, we'd love to try to get some ideas out there. Feel free to do that. But cool. everybody have a phenomenal evening. Guys, yeah. be safe. Uh, give my best to the fam, everybody. And we'll talk to you guys soon out there. Definitely be safe. One last word. If you see somebody getting beat down by a cop, record it, but then put the camera down and help, huh? Mm. yeah copy that copy yeah. that all right thank Cheers, you very much guys. guys we'll talk to you soon take care bye, everybody bye